morning, friends. Uh, today's talk is on the meaning of Christmas, and next week's is uh, on the New Year and the Crest of Cycles. This is the peak of the cycle of, uh, of the year, and it's a special time, and that's what you'll be hearing about in this week's talk and next week's talk. A little change in our program. Uh, we had been in the afternoon on uh, first and third Sundays been studying liv living the life. We've been doing it for quite a while now. We actually finished it last time. The program says that we'll be doing living the life this afternoon, where we're actually going to be starting our uh, discussions on the key to theosophy. A uh, few words about the Declaration and the, the mission of the United Lodge of Theosophists, which is to keep the original teachings in focus for us to test them against uh, our inner um, intuition and to help us differentiate what is true from what is pleasant to uh, think. We go by the Declaration of the United Lodge of Theosophists, which is printed on the back of our program. And again, it keeps us uh, in touch with the original teachings. And we have a discussion every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock uh, on, on, on some aspect of the teachings. The reading for today is from the Bhagavad Gita. There is nothing, O son of Pritha, in the three regions of the universe which it is necessary for me to perform. Not anything possible to obtain which I have not obtained, and yet I am constantly in action. All men would uh, presently follow my example, O son of Pritha. If I did not perform actions, these creatures would perish. I should be the uh, cause of confusion of caste and should have slain all these creatures, O son of Prata, as the ignorant perform the duties of life from the hope of reward, so the wise man from the wish to bring the world to duty and benefit mankind should perform his actions without motives or interest. He should not create confusion in the understanding of the ignorant, who are inclined to outward works, but by being himself engaged in action, should cause them to act also. All actions are affected by the qualities of nature. A man deluded by ignorance thinks, I am the actor. But he, O strong on one, who is acquainted with the nature of the two distinctions of cause and effect, knowing that the qualities act only in the qualities, and that the self, the capital F, is distinct from them, is not attached in action. Those who have not this knowledge are interested in the actions thus brought about by the qualities. And he who is perfectly enlightened should not unsettle those who dis whose discrimination is weak and knowledge uh, incomplete, nor cause them to relax from their duty. Throwing away uh, deed, throwing every deed on me and with thy meditation fixed upon the higher self, resolve to fight without expectation, devoid of egotism, and free from anguish. Those men who constantly follow this my doctrine without uh, reviling it, and with a firm faith shall be emancipated even by actions. But they who revile it and do not follow it are bewildered in regard to all knowledge and perish, being devoid of discrimination. 
But the wise man who seeketh, who, uh, who, sorry, but the wise man also seeketh for that which is homogeneous with his own nature. All creatures act according to their natures. What then will uh, restraint effect in every purpose of the senses or fixed affection and dislike? A wise man should not fa uh, fall in the power of these two passions, for they are the enemies of man. It is better to do one's own duty, even though it be devoid of excellence, than to perform another's duty well. It is better to perish in the performance of one's own duty. The duty of another is full of danger. And now for today's Christmas message. Uh, discussion uh, on the Christmas season and its meaning and its symbology. Um, the general idea of Christmas comes um, from the um, remembrance that Jesus was incarnated uh, into human form uh, around the 25th of December. As we all know, there is no historical or ecclesiastical information as to when he came. So this date was actually chosen by the fathers of the church. <coughs> I believe it was Synesius uh, the first. Um, but this season has tremendous significance for all humanity. And as we see, it is celebrated all over the world, but its meaning has really been lost. Um, the Christmas uh, season was celebrated by the pagans and all of the people all over the world. And during this season, similar kind of uh, celebrations were held th for thousands of years. Uh, before uh, Jesus' entrance into the view. This season that has occult uh, significance for humanity because um, it represents the return of the sun. And the significance of this is that the uh, atmosphere of the earth is regenerated during this season. Um, it is not just physical. The significance is that there is a spiritual, there is a moral, there is an intellectual uh, growth and uplifting for all during the season. So the springtime then that follows is not just for the lower kingdoms, but also for, uh, for humanity. So this incursion of energy, if we could harvest it, could uh, mean a lot uh, for us, for humanity. So this uh, re regeneration comes to um, its uh, fruition in autumn. So the ideas we take up and allowed to germinate in our, in our own inner life has significance during this period. And it is a state that when this opportunity comes, it's just like opening the tidal wave uh, and allowing the flood to come through. So in our own inner nature then, this opening also occurs. But we have to allow it. We have to um, 
make it come alive. One thing to remember is that this sun, which is the physical sun, has an invisible or spiritual sun behind it. It's a spiritual sun. And in this philosophy, this is the core from which humanity started from. And at the beginning of the Manvantara, the core values, the core ideas are imprinted in the center of each human being so that they do not get lost as the time moves along. So that imperishable center then holds everything that has been imprinted in it. So if we allow this recurrence to take hold and feed it, when the pipe goes low, it will have enough stamina to stay there until the following season when it is uplifted and regenerated again. So this eternal progress This eternal progress then goes on continuously if we only allow it to take its course. So what does that mean? It means that what is happening in our lives today has come from the previous or previous lives because it is on a continuum. So our aspirations in this life are recurrent are recurrent ideals of the soul. So these aspirations recur. And each individual can take advantage during this period to give it force, to give it force, all their energy. If it is uh, directed towards the aspiration, it will take hold. It will open and have force with it and it will have the stamina to carry us through. So, as each individual has this recurrence occurring, so does nations and civilizations go through the same thing. What well, this means that our nation and the civilization that we are in will eventually come to an end. Why? Because the ideology, the intellectual ideology, uh, has to have a form to shine through. So this uh, physical aspect of humanity, as is today, will not be able to uh, carry the um, opening of the mind into the future. The form has to change in order to reflect the new direction that humanity is to take. So what, what does that mean? Well, we have gone through ages. Uh, we have been on the scene for millions of years. So what are the ages? Well, the gold, which uh, is the innocence of our age, where the imperishable center and whatever it is, is, is imprinted with actually shines through. Humanity exhibits that core, that love and the giving and generosity, which is at the core, is actually expressed. Then we have the silver, then we go through the bronze, and this is the dark age. This is the iron age, which is dark. What kind of darkness are we talking about? Everything that our civilization represents, or most of it, is physical. Because the soul has descended into materiality, and its expression is through materiality. So as it descends into uh, matter or substance, it eclipses its spiritual aspect. So this age is a spiritual darkness. Is all of it darkness? Obviously not, because all of the um, nations all about uh, the surface of the earth 
do not go through these ages all at the same time. But the West, the Western world, uh, United States and India is definitely going through the dark age at this time, the spiritual darkness. So this means that as the human soul awakens, it understands that it is necessary to go through this process, but it also knows that it has to come out of it. Its expression needs to go towards the spirituality because we have now passed the midpoint and we are revolving towards it. So what we have learned in the um, four ages, including the dark, which is a very fast uh, stage of our being, uh, is that whatever knowledge we have gained in all those um, ages has to come through to start the golden age again. And a new type of humanity will arise in the West, and it will be expressing this ideology, the ideology of unity, of brotherhood, of oneness, because we just talked about the spiritual sun. Here's symbology for us. As the physical sun shines in this way, so does the spiritual sun shine the same way. We all come from this source, the same source, and we go through our childhood, um, youth, and maturity, and we, uh, HPV always says that humanity has reached a stage where this maturity needs, needs to be expressed. We're not children anymore. Our minds have been lighted for a very long time, and this maturity, which is the understanding that we come from the same core, we use the same materials, and we express our development in, the, in similar ways. So in this age, not only are we responsible for our own welfare, but all, all the other lower kingdoms. Because what we have learned, we have to also impart to the kim kingdoms below us. We will come back and use those uh, same elemental lives again and again. And furthering this uh, age into the future is dependent on them as well. So we need to be kind to nature around us and understand that Earth is a living entity. Earth is a living entity. It expresses itself from inside out, just like every human being does. So if we take care of it, Mother Earth will take care of us. If we do not, then the consequences also will come back to us. So, all our discoveries, science, religion, social, national life, is with very little spirituality in it. But when we also look around, we see that there are uh, doors opening in this direction, that humanity as a whole is actually searching. What is it we're searching for? Humanity is searching. What are we searching for? Well, everything around us is impermanent. It's changing continuously. <coughs> it's searching for truth. for philosophy that will support this here. So, we see this um, search going around, and 
each human being, since we are self-conscious, is responsible by using discrimination and intuition to figure out what is truth and what isn't. We are never told not to think. We are never told not to search. We are never told to accept what is being told. We are, what we are told is to search for it, to see if it is correct. How does it sit within the heart? And so we see that at certain times there's an input into the uh, universal ideology by these great beings that come to impart us their part of their knowledge. Who are these great beings? Well, obviously, if we look through the historical era even, there there is a messianic cycle that uh, every... 2100 years or so, a being comes, a great being comes, to impart knowledge. So Jesus of Nazareth is considered one of them. There were uh, Krishna, Rama, Zoroaster, if you look through the historical records, there's a whole bunch of them that came before. And uh, he came uh, within the uh, 5,000 year of the Buddha, and his teachings are very similar to what uh, Buddha had brought out. There has been another input into um, giving this knowledge to us in the 19th century, and there will be others that will come afterwards. So if we look at the um, teachings of the... Uh, 19th century, uh, we find that unity, brotherhood was at the core of what was brought out. We will not be able to go forward for ourselves alone. This self cannot achieve it all. All cells have to have a united front. Even though each human being is responsible for themselves, that unity, that we come from the same source, and when we have um, activated that inner flood within our own nature, we are halfway on the journey, halfway. Now we're going this way, we have, and all of us do not wake up to this inner light at the same time. None of these teachers that come tell us, follow me. They always say, follow your inner light. With the knowledge gained, you can become as those great beings themselves because they have followed the same path uh, in becoming enlightened. So this uh, season then is a season of giving and receiving. But when you look at the commercialism that's going on around us, uh, the giving and the receiving is, isn't what it needs to be. So the giving then is of service, of love, of brotherhood, of good thoughts, things that will open uh, other uh, human uh, lives' uh, inner potentiality and bring it forth. So it is really the heart, the thought in the heart, that takes precedence uh, here. Um, if even if our possessions are poor, uh, that is not what we need to be concentrating on. Our possessions can be poor. But that's not very important. It's the ideas, the thought process, the uh, heart process, uh, uh, generosity of the heart that is really important. So at this time then we need to uh, remember that we are the one life itself. This one life, one soul, 
is who we are. We look separate from one, one another, but in reality, in the inner life, in the expression of that inner life, we are all the same, the same life. So the Christmas then means something really important because man, the real inner man, is awake at all times. This inner man is awake. Whether we are asleep at night, it's awake. At death, it does not die, it is awake because it continues. Uh, how else would immortality be a possibility for humanity if the inner man was not alive, active, uh, conscious at all times? So we need to remember that that inner man never ever dies. It is always active. It is always um, aware of what is going on. It is always uh, trying to impress the outer so that the two eventually can work as a unit. So it is the important message uh, of the age that the personality become not an obstacle to this light shining through. And that requires a lot of work. This is all the time I had. <laughs> uh, well, was going to talk a little bit of, of the customs, but perhaps all that can come out uh, in the uh, question and answer session. So we'll stop it here. talked about uh, this being a high point in the cycle of the, of the year mm -hmm. and uh, that's why we have all these celebrations that have been changed from the past and so forth. Mm -hmm. You talked about the material, the materiality of the West and so forth. So how is our thinking different from ages past? How is our, dif uh, how is our thinking different than from ages past? In the ages past, by the way, all our um, customs, all, all of the custom comes from the pagans. We just call them different names now, but it's the same process. The pagans, uh, we're talking about first century onward. Um, for the first three, four centuries, under Roman rule, All peoples were given freedom of choice, freedom to think, freedom to follow whatever ideology they chose. And especially in the first uh, part of the first four centuries, um, we see that when people went to their altars, their temples, to pay homage to the powers of nature, because they knew how to live with uh, nature. They understood that they were paying homage and respect to the one and same source. Same source. They understood it. They knew it. They understood what it meant. It was just that their way of expression was different. It was the way of expression. Well, expression was different, but they understood that they were all paying homage to the same power. Um, unfortunately for humanity, with the introduction of Christianity, the church fathers decided to humanize these concepts. Perhaps it's because they didn't understand it themselves. If you 
to, if we look at the historical evidence, it shows that the fathers, the Gnostics and the Orthodox fathers, knowledge was not the same. The Gnostics understood. The Orthodox humanized it. Humanized it, carnalized it. They didn't perhaps understand it. This student is not able to judge. But if you look at the historical evidence, you see this come about. Um, persecution, for instance, came about. Um, whereas uh, at the beginning, under the Roman rule, everyone had freedom to choose and they followed whatever um, religious uh, philosophy they wanted to follow. But when the concept under Christian rule got humanized and concretized and carnalized and one uh, son of God was put forth as the only uh, religion to be followed, then it changed because the philosophy became um, forbidden. People could not uh, study philosophy. Uh, mathematics was forbidden. So the church uh, actually brought the dark age on when you look at the historical evidence by forcing people to accept this humanized concept of the uh, one life uh, philosophy, uh, one soul philosophy, one source that we come from, uh, it all reversed itself to this one concept of one son of God. Jesus did not come during the period assigned to him. He is, he is not a historical character, he came before the historical age. Who was on the scene in the first century is Apollonius of Tiana, not Christ. He came before. Not only that, he knew that he was coming um, perhaps early uh, to help the uh, Jewish nation, but he decided to do it. He did it. He did not come uh, but to fulfill the law. He came to show the way. He came to enlighten and encourage people to follow the truth, not him. He said, you can do greater things than I can. So that is what brought this uh, dark age over by the church fathers through ignorance perhaps uh, or uh, gaining power. Um, Eventually, they got all of the, got rid of all of the Gnostics. The last one being Hypatia, who was butchered uh, by Cyril's mob in the fourth century. And after that, the Gnostic knowledge went underground. Uh, all of the Gnostics went towards the east because the environment could not support their being there. So the Dark Age then uh, fell upon us. But. We have gone through the dark ages. We're going towards the light because human beings uh, through the sophistry cannot be controlled anymore. Human mind has opened itself to its possibilities, inner possibilities. The human soul is awake in uh, a lot of human beings and it is searching for the truth, expression of truth, how to put this in daily life uh, how to um, move forward uh, with the ideology of oneness and unity uh, that we are here just to take what we need from nature and to share what we have and that will move it forward. Yes. You mentioned, can I can, uh, continue one question? This seems to hang on the uh, Orthodox Fathers of Christianity. But was this dark age not coming as a normal age in a process of cycles, number one? And number two, yes, uh, they helped propel it, but 
they got their ideas or lack of ideas from somewhere. And it's the student understands that Christianity came out of Judaism, and uh, you know that's the continuation of the process of the downward slope. Uh, if is, is is this kind of in so you're line? saying that your question is that this is a natural process that uh, we needed to have the dark age before we can uh, reach to light again. Is that your question? Yeah, if we're going to continue to do, you know, HPV and the key started talking about uh, thinking what is pleasant rather than what is true. Well, now, I I as long as we're going to continue in that cycle, we're going to keep having these dark ages, are we not? The dark age, if you mean um, sinking into material life, in is this case a it natural is. process. But what we did not need to do was to immerse ourselves into it. That we're going to go through it, but that let the shadow be gray, not dark. Yes, we're going to go through the shadow because the comparison is necessary, but we didn't have to make it dark mm -hmm. and totally immersed into it because we have forgotten our inner life. We have forgotten where we have come from because we're constantly uh, fed. For the last 2,000 years or 1,800 years, we were fed that um, that is the truth, that the separation that um, uh, this student is not here to talk against religion. It's just that we need to point to where it started from and we have a choice to move towards the light because human mind is open. It can perceive the truth for itself at this age. Every individual has to make these choices. And when the soul awakens to its inner life, that's also a process. And this is not where everyone awakens all at the same time and perceives the truth, uh, inner truth that is, uh, with intuition and discrimination. But we are mature human beings. We have gone through all these stages. Now it is for us to bring in the golden age. And there are pockets when you look all around the world that this is being initiated. Humanity has matured to understand that it is all one unity. It comes from the same source. And once that we come to understand that, then that floodgate opens and the altruistic nature that expresses itself. And when this becomes a general uh, expression, then we are moving forward towards that. Um, you talked about the spiritual sun shining like the physical sun does. Um, does the spiritual sun also go through these cyclical changes? Spiritual sun does not change in its essence. It, it shines into the heart of each human being and guides it. If, it al if the human being will allow the guidance, and this is what this process we talked about is, that inner awakening of the soul to its own inner nature, its possibilities. Because in this philosophy, where do we come from? We come from higher intelligences. And in the pagan nations, this was understood. Come from higher intelligence. What Darwin did was not a favor to humanity. We don't come from the apes. We come from higher intelligences. And these higher intelligences in their collectivity, according to the secret doctrine, constitute the builders, the Diane Johannic cross or the builders. So we are not without help. They are there. But these are powers of nature they are impersonal, they're impartite, and so we need to become like them to understand where we have come from. Uh, the, the other thing is the mind. Uh, the way it is expressed in these teachings, we do have a higher mind. 
uh, none of the uh, even the um, scientific people accept such a theory uh, to the student's knowledge at this time, but they are beginning to show that the heart and the mind work together, and uh, the math expression is one of those concepts. So the mind is definitely opened up to its uh, greater possibilities at this age. So yes, that light itself does not change, but the vehicle does. And as the vehicle becomes purer, more attuned to universal concepts, then it's able to shine through it. So that inner light, you can call it God, you can call it any Christ principle, you can call it Horus, uh, you can call it Isis, you can call it whatever you want to call it, but it's the same. The pagans called it different names, Bacchus, um, what were those uh, terms that HPV lists a whole line of them, uh, what the ancients used to designate this inner power, this inner light, but they understood that it was the same light, that each nation or each uh, religion did not contend with the other religion, except when the Jewish uh, concept came into being, they considered themselves superior and separate from all the rest. And so that brought this uh, change in human uh, conceptions of life, light, unity, all that uh, change its uh, expression in human life. So you, this student was thinking about the selfishness versus selflessness that we keep talking about. Nature is selfless. The builders are selfless. Powers so we nature. have the powers of nature, so it's our job to help those powers by becoming selfless and thinking universally and so forth? Well, this hierarchy, she says that there are builders, this is a hierarchy. They're all under law. It's not human law. This is law. This is karma. This is law nature's law. And each hierarchy works within the sphere of its power and it is subservient to the power above it. But in their collectivity, um, secret doctrine says they constitute the light of the logos. Da idi prakriti, light of the logos. Its expression is through a vehicle, because these are powers of nature, but it has its correlative aspect with the human nature. The cosmic nature has a correlative with the human nature. So as we become more and more universal, then we can express these powers. But these are not obtained by artificial effort. It is obtained by true service to humanity. The bit that we uh, read from this uh, here at the end. It comes as a um, as a gift from uh, these hierarchies. Uh, expression of these hierarchies. It says that here it was. There is the giving of service, of love, of brotherhood, of every thought that makes for good, for good, a given, sorry, I can't read, a giving open to all, however poor our personal possessions may be. It is the feeling and the thought in our hearts which reach people and stir their hearts to a better perception, a better feeling, a wider and a stronger action for all our hearts are based on the same one life, this one soul, one life. So in the olden days, people understood these concepts. Now we have forgotten them and we need to remember them again. And remembrance comes each human soul nudging the next one, uh, imparting that 
uh, light, just, just a little bit of that light would uh, move the other heart, especially those who are inclined in the same manner. Yeah. Would the cycle be different in a different hemisphere? Like, is it localized? I mean, we're talking about an astronomical phenomena of the solstice, which for the southern hemisphere would be at the opposite time of year. So would, uh, would the benefits of, of um, y y uh, like taking advantage of this cycle be opposite in the southern hemisphere? That is not what this uh, philosophy expressed. So this is students' understanding. It says that those who are aware of this benefit, regardless of where they are, they can benefit from it, even though the sun will have that same effect when it moves to the southern hemisphere. It will be, the tide will not, at the, in the north, it will not be at its flood, but because we have given it so much energy, so much effort, it's going to hold us steady with that effort. That's what this understanding is, that the same applies to the south, that they can also take advantage of it through the heart and the mind staying constant with that altruistic uh, yearnings of the soul. I mean, that would be a benefit year-round, right? I mean, that's the, the principles we're talking about are, are all kind of like daily, universal, right. you know, sensible principles, but in terms of that benefit at a particular time of year, it seems like if that's astronomical, it would have an effect on the other It is hemisphere. astronomical in the sense that at the beginning of that, um, each, um, uh, how could you put it, um, when uh, humanity moves from one sign of the zodiac to the next, uh, that is when a great being appears. And every 2100 years is a cycle for it. Mm -hmm. So at that beginning, a keynote obviously is a struck of some sort. This student doesn't understand it. But that keynote is going to carry us. What is the keynote for this age is unity and brotherhood because it is based on collective effort. Uh, we are not going to be able to solve our problems because they are so tremendous we need to put our energy uh, as, a, as a unity to solve it. So obviously that's part of it, but what the rest of it, this student doesn't know, but it is up to each soul to figure it out because it's, there isn't someone else coming to tell us. We have to open our own gates, blood gates, and figure it out through discrimination and intuition because that is also necessary at this stage of our development that somebody should not come and tell us uh, what we should be doing because that would then mean that the other person is putting themselves in the place of authority and she says there is no such thing in life at this developmental stage for humanity as authority, that each human soul is its own authority. So, but yes, so 2100 years Aquarian age, this uh, impulse was brought forth, and there will be another one for the n after the next 2,000 years. But in the meantime, uh, the six sub rays, or the um, uh, its uh, first initial stage, has or had already begun in the 1900. This is 21st century. So those beings um, who are coming to assist this process is incarnating in this sphere. Because uh, remember the old Egyptians uh, who, who kind of perished are now incarnating in this hemisphere. And they bring all the knowledge that they had gained during that period plus what humanity has gained up to this point and that together is going to move it forward. It's not just the Egyptians but all of the uh, great nations that disappeared from the surface of the earth uh, because of the freedom of the West is now being able to incarnate in this hemisphere and give it a, a move forward. Um, but the other thing is, there's another concept to that, that we need to prepare uh, a pure um, lineage, pure lineages where families are concerned, so that 
Gnanis, if that's how we pronounce it, can reincarnate on Earth, that they have long ago have left this hemisphere because it had become nephitic to their nature. So as we move to clean it, to make it bright, to learn to share our resources, to um, be joyous that we are able to do it and stay with the um, truth as the soul perceives it, then we're bringing all that about. You're talking about the larger cycle, but in terms of the annual cycle, the cycle that we're entering now, we're celebrating the birth of the gods, if you will, about this time of the year. And I think it was, it was Mr. Judge who said, uh, good deeds and good thoughts and so forth uh, have a 10, 100 fold effort, have a, in other words, it was long, we're working with the laws of nature, if you will. If we can start our impetus now, it has a large impact. Not that it's not important in July, but uh, this, this is the season, tenfold. This is the season to really yeah. rethink where we're at <coughs> in terms of our selfishness, etc., and love and understanding. Folk, try to focus on that and get our thinking right as we uh, uh, go through this season and enter the, make the new year? Yeah, 25th of December is when all the uh, sun gods uh, descended. So that still is the case, that this uh, event occurs every 25th of December every year. So we talked about the recurrence of this uh, tide and it's due to this because this uh, was a, uh, a known fact to the pagans and all of the uh, races of humanity. They understood that the sun gods all incarnated uh, during that period. And so still uh, the same phenomena occurs, even though we have made a different, uh, different um, philosophy out of it, if you can call it philosophy, a carnalized uh, concept perhaps. But still, um, humanity is um, searching for truth, and as said, truth always comes out, so it will come out. Okay, that's all the time we have. Thank you. We do have a, a study class this afternoon for those who can stay, and um, thank you for coming.